July 14th, 15th, and 16th, I was at a great amusement park known as the one and only park owned by Dolly Parton Dollywood. And I had a great time. This park is definitely a top park for me. It has some great coasters, just some worthy mentions. Tennessee Tornado, Wild Eagle, Thunderhead. But the roller coaster that I'm reviewing, the highlight of that trip, the world's tallest wooden roller coaster, world's fastest wooden roller coaster, Lightning Rod. And this roller coaster right off the bat is a great roller coaster. I rode it three times during my trip. It was that good. I rode in the back, the front, and the middle. All experiences, all great experiences. The back was the best, just putting it out there, just saying. But this roller coaster I am going to review, and you will see my full, complete, 100% full out thoughts on this great wooden roller coaster. And let me just say, this is definitely a top coaster. So first up, the height. And here's the thing. Lightning Rod's height, I believe because of the hillside, is around 206 feet. So people consider it the tallest wooden roller coaster out there. However, the drop is only 165 feet, I believe. So it isn't the tallest drop on a wooden roller coaster, but it definitely is one of the tallest drops in a wooden roller coaster. And so this roller coaster per se, I guess you can say, we're going to go by the drop for this. So it's going to get around a... I'm going to say like a 6.5 or a 7. I guess we'll just say a 6.5 for now. Just right in between a 6 and a 7. Make it fair. But this roller coaster is a very fair height. The drop is very big and the hillside height, which is 206 feet. However, if the drop was like 200 feet, then obviously that would be the tallest wooden roller coaster drop and height. But when it comes to the launch height, then it is the tallest wooden roller coaster, but by the drop, it isn't the tallest wooden roller coaster. So it is kind of confusing, but we're going by the drop height. But it's still a gigantic roller coaster. Now next up is the speed, and this roller coaster is um, 100% the fastest wooden roller coaster in the world. It goes 73 miles per hour, but that's a great speed. It keeps that speed throughout the ride. There's no stops or pauses it's crazy speed and so we are giving it a seven because it isn't the fastest of roller coasters out there but it's still very fast and you feel that speed it is crazy now is the now the duration and this roller coaster is about a minute a minute 10 a minute 20 no idea but we're just going to give it around a i would say about a five five and a half just to make it fair we'll say about a five but it definitely isn't a short ride, but it also isn't that long of a ride. But with, with what it packs inside the roller coaster, it's fine. Now the drop, and this roller coaster's drop is getting a 9. This is definitely a great drop. It isn't the best of drops that I've been on, but it definitely is a great drop. I like how it just like comes out of nowhere. Like you go down that small little pre-drop, then you just like fly over down 165 feet. It's a crazy drop. I love this drop very much. Now the smoothness, and clearly Lightning Rod's going to get a 10. This roller coaster is brand new. It just opened this past, past month, and it is butter smooth. There's no rattly. There's no rough transitions. Everything on this roller coaster that you get, transitions, turns, elements, all butter smooth. There's really no th nothing to complain about. No thing to complain about about this roller coaster's tracking and designing when it comes to smoothness. Now the airtime. This roller coaster is getting a 10. This roller coaster is definitely one of the airtime packed roller coasters that I've been on. You have that quadruple down, which just keeps you flying out of your seat four times. Crazy. About 20 seconds of airtime from what I hear. It's a crazy amount of airtime. You get airtime on your sides even, I felt. Towards the brake run, when you go over that hill right over there. It's crazy. You get some great airtime on that even. And even when you go over the pre-drop, that's also some great airtime, especially in the back. When I rode this roller coaster in the back, the airtime on this ride is just 10 times better. It's a crazy amount of airtime on this ride. Definitely you won't be disappointed if you're an airtime fanatic. Now the intensity, and this roller coaster yet again is getting a 10. This is one of the most intense roller coasters I've ever been on, and it will be one of the most intense roller coasters for those who are going to ride it, because this roller coaster does not disappoint for intensity. It is one of the most intense roller coasters out there. You fly all over the place, transitions are even intense, it keeps you on your side, it keeps you anticipated, it's crazy good when it comes to intensity. There's really nothing disappointing, and if you're into intensity, then this is the ride for you, or at least one of the rides for you. Not in Tim Air 305 intensity, but it's definitely one of the rides for you. 
Now the launch. Now this roller coaster doesn't have a huge, crazy launch, 70 mile per hour, 80 mile per hour type thing. I believe this launch is about 40, 45 miles per hour. So, but here's how good the launch is, not how fast it goes. But this launch is very fun. We're going to give it a six because it's right above average because it does get you from surprise. I like how it makes like the vrooming sounds as it goes up the launch. It's a very fun launch. It isn't anything crazy intense, but it is a very, very fun launch. Not very, very intense, but very, very fun. So that's why it isn't going to get like a 9 or a 10, but it's definitely going to get a 6. This is above average for fun, but it isn't the best of launches out there. Now the restraints. So the restraints are getting a 10 or a 9, really either way goes, but I, they're your average RMC lap bars. They're great. They don't really have any pain p pushing into your thighs or anything like that. It's great restraints. They don't, they aren't uncomfortable unless if you're um, overweight, heavy, um, then it may be a problem. But other than that, it's really not going to be a problem. They're great restraints in my opinion. I'm giving them a 10, just putting it out there. Now to theming. And Dollywood is known for having great themings to towards their roller coasters. Definitely a great, beautiful park for theming, even when it comes to their rides and attractions. And Lightning Rod's no exception. Lightning Rod, I am giving this roller coaster about a 7 for theming. The Lightning Rod train makes a vrooming sound as you launch up the hill. Even, like, the motor starting as you're going around the corner to about to be launched up the hill. And you also see throughout the queue, queue line the, um... NASCAR like car and like facts about the NASCARs and everything like that. I don't really know how to put it, but it's definitely really, really cool theming. But it, is, it isn't the best theming out there, but it's definitely really, really cool theming. And for what it delivers for theming, it's great. Now we are at the overall score, and Lightning Rod is getting a 10. This is in, without a doubt, my top 10 roller coasters I've ever been on. Maybe even my top 5, that's going to take some deciding though. This is, without a doubt, my number 2 wooden roller coaster. Maybe even my number 1, that's going to take some deciding too. No definites for number 1, but definitely number 2. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this review. If you like these reviews, make sure to like, comment, and rate and I'll see you all next time in more reviews. I you probably will be able to see more Dollywood reviews like Thunderhead, Wild Eagle, Tennis or Tornado in the upco upcoming future. But until then, make sure to stay tuned and I'll see you all next time. Coaster Mania signing out.